What's going on, YouTube? It's uh, Sunday Fun Day football, and um, got one of my favorite cuts of meat to cook today. Got a nice tri tip that I found in the grocery store uh, not not too long ago. It's been in my freezer. Tri tip is hard to find around here. I'm on the East Coast. Tri tip is a, a thing on the West Coast, like California. I actually got turned on to it from a friend of mine who is from the Bay Area. But, um, you know, every, every now and then you can find a tri-tip around here. Uh, when I see one in the store, I snatch it up. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, like a, on the East Coast, we cook a lot of brisket. Um, but tri-tip is a very nice cut of meat. You see, this one has a lot of fat on it. A lot of times it's trimmed, if you find it, but this one has a, you see it has a very thick fat cap on. So the first thing I'm going to do is trim some of this off. I'm not gonna trim all of it off because, you know, we all know that uh, when it comes to beef, fat is flavor, but you don't want all this fat on your meat. So like I said, the first thing I'm gonna do is trim this. And um, once I get it trimmed and ready to get seasoned, I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I trimmed this tri-tip. Um, you can see I took a lot of the fat off, but I did purposely leave, um, I tried to leave maybe a quarter inch of that fat cap on there because that fat cap is flavor. I'm gonna cook this thing low and slow first and then I'm gonna sear it. I didn't trim much. I did trim some of the fat, but not much off of the bottom side. I'm gonna cook it fat side up. So this fat, that you see will probably get melted down into the dripping pan that I'm gonna put under, that I'm gonna use to make some um, some braising liquid, as you would say. But it's all trimmed up uh, and I'm gonna season it. So what I'm gonna use is this. This is um, Kinder's The Blend, salt, pepper, and garlic. You know, I, I think that's all that beef needs. Normally I would just um, put some salt, pepper, and garlic powder on there, but I do like this, like buying this that's already um, mixed up. I bought, it, bought this from Costco. It's the same thing that I would put on um, beef if I didn't have this, but it's nice to have a pre-mixed um, seasoning. So I'm just gonna pop it open and I'm gonna turn it over first. That's the side that's gonna be down. So I'm gonna season it fairly, you know, pretty liberally. Cause like I said, I'm gonna cook this thing rolling slow at uh, about 225 until it gets to medium. And then I'm gonna sear it. I'm gonna get the fire hot and sear it, sear it on both sides. It's a thick cut of meat, so it can take a lot of seasoning. That's why I like cooking this. I'm gonna turn it over. Season the other side. And now, this baby is going to go in the fridge and rest for a little bit. And I'm gonna make some uh, chimichurri to go with it. I got turned on to chimichurri on one of my anniversaries where me and my wife went out to this real nice restaurant and I had a, actually had a bison ribeye and it came with some chimichurri. And since then I've been in love with it. So, I think chimichurri goes really good with beef. So that's what we'll be serving this thing with. So we'll be right back at you. So chimichurri is something that I fell in love with when I went out on one of my anniversaries. I had it with a steak. So um, I had to figure out how to make it at home. So here we go. So we'll start with some shallots that I chopped up. Gonna add a uh, chopped chopped green pepper, green.
green chili, green chili pepper. I have some roasted garlic, courtesy of my lovely wife. Some chopped cilantro. Cilantro is good in everything. Got some chopped parsley. Some oregano. Salt. Some vinegar. This is red wine vinegar. Um, you can use white wine vinegar, balsamic. Um, either, either or, red wine is just what I happen to have laying around, so that's what I put in. And last but not least, some EVOO. As uh, my girl Rachel Ray would say, extra virgin olive oil. Um, you know, I, I've, I've been a foodie for a long time and I kind of had a crush on Rachel Ray back in the day. Um, I used to watch her show all the time and that's, you know, part of the reason why I kind of fell in love with cooking. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna whisk all this up. Get it all mixed up real good. Smells good. Be real nice if y'all could smell this video, but this smells amazing. I never tried chimichurri until, like I said, it was one of my, I think it actually was my last anniversary. And um, we went to some fancy French steakhouse and I think I said it earlier, I had a bison ribeye and it came with chimichurri and um, it was amazing. So, you know, my thing is if I have something out and I like it, I have to learn how to recreate it at home. That's my thing. Oops, making a mess, but we can clean it up. So that's all mixed up. And I'm just gonna put that in the fridge. I'm gonna cover it, put it in the fridge and let it sit while we get that tri-tip cooking. All right. Got the grill at 250. Really wanted between 225 and 250, but that's good. We'll tweak it a little bit. Got the tri-tip out here. Gonna go ahead and throw it on the fire. Let it cook a little slow. As you can see, I have uh, a pan, water pan with some onions I chopped up and some garlic, some minced garlic in there. That's gonna serve two purposes. Um, first of all, it's gonna steam and keep the meat from drying out. And then I'm gonna put the meat directly over the pan and the dripping is all gonna go into the pan. It's gonna make a nice braising liquid. So I'm just gonna get a plastic, or rip the plastic cap off of the meat, I'll say. And just throw this thing on it directly over the pan so the drippings get in the pan. Now, then I'm gonna just throw, I have some rosemary. This is some fresh rosemary. Sprigs of rosemary, very fresh actually. Um, just clipped it from my rosemary plant that I have growing on my deck right here. I um, got this plant from one of my neighbors when we first moved into the neighborhood um, a few years ago and that thing has survived winters, uh, summers, it doesn't quit. So, you know, if you, um, if you cook big cuts of beef like I do, or lamb, rosemary goes real good with lamb, do yourself a favor and um, just get you a rosemary plant. You won't regret it. But for now, we're just gonna um, close the lid and uh, let this thing cook. So I'll be right back at you. We're gonna let it go low and slow until it gets to about medium. And then I'm gonna crank the fire up, take off the deflector and I'm gonna sear it. So I'll be right back at you. Okay, here we are. Look at that tent. That's right at 250. These uh, ceramic Kamado grills, 
it's amazing the way these things hold temperature. I mean, once you learn your grill and uh, learn how to adjust your vents, I mean, these things cook cold temperature like an oven. It's amazing. So, you see we have our tri-tip. Wanted to get it to medium rare, about 130 to 140. So we're gonna put the thermometer in there. You see it's at 137. So it's about ready to come off. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull it off and then I'm gonna take that drip pan and um, you know, all the drip pan and the heat deflector off, get the grill up to about maybe 400 degrees and sear it off on both sides. Be right back at you. Okay, so what I did was just open the vents, let some air get to that fire. It took about 10 minutes. And now that thing is up to about 400 degrees. I took the heat deflector out. So um, we're just cooking over direct heat right now. So I'm just gonna have my tri-tip right here. It was wrapped in a plastic wrap. So I'm gonna get these rosemary sprigs off of here. I'm just gonna throw it on and sear it. So I'm gonna just throw it on first. We're gonna throw fat side down. I'm let that thing sit there. We'll sit it for about, I'm gonna say five to seven minutes and flip it. And come back and see what we got. Okay, so it's been about five minutes at 400 degrees. I'm gonna open her up. A lot of smoke, a lot of fire. So we're just gonna flip it, let it sear on the other side. Oops. Turn it over. Nice. Real nice. I'm just gonna let it go for about five minutes on that side, and then it'll be done. Another step I wanted to show, you know, I didn't show before, but um, you know, I keep these Clorox wipes around. Every time I open the grill, I tend to try to wipe the handle off. Just, you know, I work in healthcare, so I'm real, real big on hand, hand, uh, hand hygiene. Just wanna make sure we're not cross contaminating everything, anything, but just gonna let that go for another five minutes and then pull it off and see what we got. Okay, here we are. Been about five minutes on the other side. So gonna open it grill looks good smells good I'm gonna pull this thing off I'm gonna put it in the pan I'm gonna cover it with foil and let it rest for about 10 minutes before I slice it so I'll be right back at you all right so here we are at our moment of truth I'm gonna slice this thing see what we came up with so my plan is to only maybe slice half of it and serve it with chimichurri and then you know um well i'll say eat it with chimichurri while i watch the game and then the rest i'm gonna um braise So it's really tender. Looks good. Of course, the end pieces are going to be a little bit more done, but 
medium well is what I was looking for. And it looks like we got medium well because it looks like we still have a little strip of pink in there, a little bit of pink. So yeah, that looks good. So like I said, and it's, it's really juicy. It's slicing like butter. Look at that. That's, that's perfect medium well. Medium well is how I like my meat. A lot of people like medium rare. Some people like well done. You know, what you like is what you like. Medium well is what I like. And that's medium well. Looks good. Looks really good. So that's about all I'm gonna slice. Here you never look at that. It's really nice, real juicy. You can see the juice coming out of there. And then I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with this piece and that braising liquid that I made. Okie dokie. So right here, this is my snack plate. I'm about to watch the game, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the rest of this tri-tip. You see, I have some of it sliced, but I also have this, uh, this pan. This, it was the water pan and, um, you know, the drippings from the tri-tip on the grill dripped into it. So I'm going to add some of this, which is this, uh, better than bouillon. This is beef base. I'm gonna throw some of that in there. Just a little bit. It's already got beef flavor because of the drippings. So I'm just gonna mix that up a little bit. And you can hear my oven in the background beeping let me know that it's heated up. Um, I, heated, I heated the oven to 350. And like I said, this is that uh, pan that I let the tri-tip cook over with the onions and the garlic and I added the beef base. And I'm just going to take this other chunk of tri-tip and drop it in there. Get off the fork. Doesn't wanna come off the fork, but there we go. And I'm gonna cover that with foil. Cover that with a sheet of foil. And I'm gonna throw it in the oven at 350 and just let it braise. So that's gonna be really tender. So we got tri-tip two ways. I'll show you, uh, I'll show you what this comes out like as well. Be right back at you. Yeah, so here's the rest of that tri-tip. It's, um, you know, I sliced it and let it cook in that braising liquid for a couple of hours. It's super, super tender. That's how my family likes it. My family does not like um, what they would call pink meat, medium rare. I do like it. That's why I cooked a little bit of it. Um, you know, that's why I sliced some of it for me when it was... Um, medium well and then i'll put the rest in this braising liquid and let it cook but tastes real good smells real good the smoke flavors there um came out real good i'm happy so you know like always if you uh like the content on my page uh like comment subscribe turn on the no notifications because i will be having more content coming soon until then have fun and get it done. Peace. We are out.